praise God. God is indeed good, isn't he? Amen. Welcome to ALC. Can we put our hands together and give God the glory this morning, please? Amen. Amen. Well, we'd like to recognize, first of all, we'd like to recognize a, a, a family that is here. They have a new, actually, Pastor Brian and Sister Elaine. I'm not sure they're here. Uh, they have, they're going to have a celebration or announcement, but we just like to recognize their family. Pastor Rick and uh, Pastor Rick's mom is here and the, and, the, and, and the sisters. And God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And anyone else that is here for the first time, thank you for coming. We certainly appreciate you uh, taking the time and uh, allowing us to be part of your Sunday celebration. And, and we want you to be uh, encouraged. If you are looking for a home church, of course, uh, we have so many family of churches here in the island. We know them. Uh, we have personal relationship with them. Let us know. Of course, ALC is, still, is always open for your consideration. And always did. You can tell I'm, I'm smiling, right? You know why? Because my wife... Pastor Judy is here. Amen. And somebody was asking me earlier, I said, Pastor, where's your goggles? And no, I, 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 two weeks is done, and so I won't be, uh, I, uh, goggles will be later on. And I'm still a little bit, um, my eyes are a little bit shaky. And I said, man, you know, usually when, when I had my cataract, I couldn't see faces. I just see um, uh, images or outlines and and when I'm preaching I, I don't really see if you're smiling or 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 sleeping and and sometimes that is good isn't it but now since I'm my eyes is healing I can see you I can see if you're sleeping I can see if you're smiling I can see if you don't like and so now I said man I need to really look up that's why I'm looking when I'm preaching I'm looking above your head so that I don't get I don't I don't see how you uh, you react and so uh, I guess that's the dilemma, having a good eyesight. But I can't, sometimes I, I can't see things clearly, but I can hear them. As a matter of fact, I, I, can, I, don't see, I can't see those ants over there in the, up in the back, but I can hear them, you know, compensating on, on what. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Well, in, uh, in a few weeks, we'll be ha having our celebration of Resurrection Sunday. And as always, it is always good for us to to uh, take inventory of our lives. And also in, in, in the coming weeks, I'll be talking and going through the book of Hebrews, uh, something that I felt uh, is, 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 uh, is complete. And so, and so I said, well, let's, uh, let's, let's try to start up with the uh, repression of our hearts. Uh, let me ask you this. If you see a child acting as a child, what do you say? He's cute, right? And if a child acts like a child, child is away, you say, man, that's, that's, a, that's a child. And so that's, that's something that that child does. Children do that all the time. And, and, and as they grow, you begin to see things and you begin to gauge them, right? And if a child begins to act uh, above their age, they say, God bless you. Know, you know, they're maturing. And, but if a child grows and begins to act as if they're still babies, you begin to say, no, you better act to your age. You know, you're, you're getting older. You're, you're, you need to mature. And pretty soon, you begin as parents, you begin to say, you know, that's enough. You are being childish. Do we correct them or not? Yes, we do, right? Do we correct them? Yes, we do. Why? Because we want them to mature to the level of where they're supposed to be. Now, in the Christian uh, uh, life, too, uh, God allows us to have, to start as a babies in Christ. When you become born again, when you receive Christ, Lord, and Savior, it's so cute. You're, 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 you're a baby. You don't know much, and you don't know, you don't know the lingos and, and all the other ways where all Christians are so familiar with. But then as you begin to grow, there's a tendency for you to begin to, to, uh, to um, there, there's a, there's a, either a progression or a regression. The author of Hebrews was going to talk about deep things in the Lord. And as he was writing to the Christians, he began to recognize that uh, as God was leading him, he began to see them from being based to older Christians. 
And in the midpoint, he stopped and says, "Now wait a second. Now I, I, I think I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm talking to a different crowd. Isn't that something? You know, sometimes when you're talking to people, when you're talking to your, to some people, and say, and you're you're just talking, and then you suddenly stop, right? You're 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 no longer communicating. You're you're either talking beyond their line of understanding, and so you pull back." This morning, we are going to uh, talk about something that is uh, dear to my heart, and, and hopefully it will give us an, an opportunity to, to recognize and start fresh and begin a journey towards maturity. The title of the message this morning, all right. Jay, can you help me? I th- yeah, there you go. I think it's, it's not working right. Mark of spiritual immaturity. Marks of spiritual immaturity. Marks of spiritual immaturity, and my intention this morning is, is not, to, not to bring condemnation, but to begin to see to the eyes of God, to his, to the, from the Father's eyes, how we are progressing. And in this particular part of Scripture, we would, see, we would notice that there are, there are, there, there are certain things that, that a mature person begins to be gauged. There are other factors about being immature or being uh, um, immature Christian. One of them would be you're easily offended. That's one of them. Uh, you begin to uh, to have you have you you begin to be judgmental. You begin to lose uh, your your desire to serve the Lord. Those are part. But in this case, let us see where the Word of God will lead us, and you would notice that there are something that is that that are very important. Now, please bear with me. Eventually, I will be able to read through. Uh, click, please, on the next one. Hebrew 5, chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. Read along with me. Go ahead, click it, please. And it says, Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. This is the author saying, he stopped midway, saying, Look, I'm going to stop first before we proceed on to the greater knowledge of God. And he says, uh, I've got so much to tell you. I've got so much to tell you, but, but you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of, of, uh, uh, of, the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. When I see that word babe, right? No, babe. No, that means baby, not, not young girl. Babe. Baby. But, I, I, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Can we repeat that again? It says, solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Did you understand, did we, did we understand the, uh, the, 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 the uh, gist of that? All right, let, let's see another translation. Here's a good one. It says, there's much. Here's the one in Living Translation. It's, it's easier to say. It says, there's much to say along this line, but you don't seem to listen, uh, so it's hard to make you understand. You have been Christians a long time now, and you ought to be teaching others, but instead you have dropped back to the place where you need someone to teach you all over again the very first principles in God's Word. You are like babies who can only drink milk, not old enough for solid food, and when a person is still living in milk, on milk, it shows he isn't very far along in the Christian walk or life and doesn't know much about the difference between right and wrong. He's still a baby, Christian. You will never be able to eat solid food, spiritual food, and understand the deeper things of God's Word until you become a better Christian and learn right from wrong and practicing by and practicing doing right. Look at that for a moment. It says here, you've been, you've, been, you've been a Christian for a while. Now, this one has nothing to do with going to church. There are many people, and including ALC, there are many people that are visiting, uh, going to church, and you can tell from them that they are, they, they would, you would assume that they are growing, but for some reason, there's a point in time that you could say their action, they've never grown. And the writer says this, you have stopped growing, he says, and, and, and here are the things that, that we want to emphasize because 
because growing the Lord is very important. Now, when a person uh, does not grow or stop growing, there are three things that, that, that he's open. Number one is this. Uh, he, be, he begins to uh, forfeit the, uh, his standing before God. His standing before the Lord simply means that when you are saved or born again, you become son or daughter of the king. You are adopted, number one. That is the elementary teaching wherein you become now, no longer you are uh, of the darkness, but you are now the son and daughter. Think about that for a moment. You've been adopted. We've been adopted to be sons and daughters of the king. Can somebody say amen? The second one says, if we are not growing in grace, we are not getting the full benefits of being mature in Christ, where only maturity can give us the benefit, patience, kindness, all the others benefit. And number three is this, if a person or a Christian is not growing or continues to be a baby in the Lord, they are open to all kinds of wrong teachings, even the schemes of the enemy, and the Bible says they are tossed to and fro when a person decided to stop growing. Now, in this word, we will, we will dissect, we will continue the four points that I like for us, markers, indicators of if a person is spiritually immature. Are you, are you, are you with me? All right, number, number one is this. When we begin to see, uh, yeah, says here, number one is this, you become full of dull of hearing. Number one, when a person begins to de descend to spiritual immaturity, one of the things, the key element is this, they become dull of hearing, dull of hearing. Dull of hearing simply means before they were open to the Word of God. When you get saved, how many of you were so excited? It's like getting married. You, you received the Lord. You said, man, I'm so excited. Everything is fresh. Do you remember that time? You were so excited. Amen. You are so excited that you can't not stop to tell anyone about your new faith in Christ. It's, it's fresh. When the preaching is there, you just kind of say, wow, you receive it all. Why? Because your hearing is open. Your spirit is alive. You can see things as, 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 as never before. You are open to what the Lord is telling you. Do you remember that? Amen. Do you still have that sense of, of, of hearing before God even now? Then, congratulations, you are growing in maturity. When you begin, when the Word of God is preached, when you get this, you begin to say, you are excited. Unfortunately, as anything, here's what happens. And just like in perhaps in marriage or in a relationship, unless it is worked on, there's a point when it begins to regress. Anything that you put there by itself without maintaining will break down. Do you follow me? Everything that is not maintained will break down. And you begin to fall into what they call a level of spiritual immaturity. Spiritual immaturity begins to take over, and you begin to lose that desire. Revelation tells it like you are losing your first love. It is no longer, it doesn't give you that, 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 that excitement the same way as it was before. Dull of hearing. Dull of hearing simply means it was, it was started sharp. There was this guy, there was this man who went into, um, during the time when there was not yet, um, the machineries. He was he was he was hired to be to um, to uh, uh, to cut off lumber's with his axe, and and his and, and the uh, foreman says, "Well, you can cut as many here in a day, and by then you will you would be paid the, the how many trees you you fell." So the the guy started hacking off, and the first day he was doing well. He was actually doing well with his. With, with his with his axe, and the next day, it was he was he was doing well, but it wasn't the same number of, of, of trees that he was who was cutting as the first one. And the third day, it was even worse. It was half of what the first and second, and the fourth one become lesser. And the fourth man recognized. I said, "Hey, you know, um, you started well, and how come 
the first one you were so you were so full of vigor and and now and the fourth day how come you have only this so many and the guy says i don't sir i don't even i don't understand either he says i'm doing i'm i'm expending the same energy but for some reason i'm just cutting so many and the foreman recognized you know when was the last time you sharpened your axe when was the last time you sharpened your axe and 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 sure enough it's an axe and he says unless you sharpen your axe no matter how much energy you expand you won't have the same outcome amen see each one of us are given acts by god we have given talents but when we begin to misuse them we begin to have this dull of hearing dull of hearing simply means it is not even the message itself it is not the hardness of the message but their inability to receive it how do you know a person becomes immature when you begin to when when a person is is a lovely correction with love and they don't receive that it is not hard but it is their inability to receive it have you met someone like that amen now let's ask ourselves what are the things that probably can take us to have a dull of hearing Number one is this. Raise your hands, raise your word, please. This is the word of God. The book of Acts, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says that this word of God, the written word of God is powerful, it is alive. Do you believe that? It is powerful, it is alive. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It, it can penetrate in, penetrate out. It can divide between the spirit and, 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 and soul. It can actually divide between the flesh. It is the discern of truth, the word of God. It is alive. You don't have to make it exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting. The question that I need to pose to you and me is this. When you read the Word of God, is it boring? When you begin to read the Word of God, is it boring? When it begins to be boring, the first few moments, and you, 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 you put it down, and then you want to do other things. Let me tell you this, brothers. That is a landmark. That's a mark of you. Your hearing is beginning to be diminished because the Word of God is this. It is alive. It will wake you up. It is going to make you alive. The Word of God, when you and I begin to treat the Word of God as it's boring, then something, it is a warning. Watch out! When a person begins to, on the road to maturity, the first thing that will be thrown out of the window is the Word of God. Because the Word of God is like a mirror. It will face it, and you begin to see, and if you see the Word, it reflects. When someone that you know or someone that is here begin to not do his time alone with God, listen to me very carefully. Come on now, am I, am I making sense? How many of you know this? I know this. You know this. The more you don't spend reading the Word of God, chances are you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Another thing that we can say is this. Sermons that are prepared by teachers or pastors one of the things that you begin to understand is as you begin to be critiquing what you hear, even on television, on TVs, or even in, in, in the Adam's Peter of Church, you begin to be you begin to be critiquing them. Oh, that's a, not a good way. You begin. Why? Because you begin to be a little bit of dull of hearing. Do you know someone like that? Do you know when you begin to fade, you, you begin to have this sense, that's one of them. And dull of hearing, dull of hearing is one of them. Now, as a result of that, you go to the next part. It says here, number one is this, a mark of spiritual immaturity is number one, you begin to have dull of hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God, you begin to alive. Now, if you're dull of hearing, the second part is this, comes in, it says here, um, I don't know, we, we need, can you, go ahead please, uh, can you just click it off, the next one, next one, there you go, next. 
we, we studied, we, we made this. Ah, uh, no, all right. Uh, we, we practice this. We don't have to, okay? Number two is this, you have, uh, uh, well, we, we passed one. Can we go back? All right. The next one is this. Number one is dollar period. Number two is this. You, the inability to teach begins to take place. Show me a church who is not growing, and I will show you a church where its member are no longer mentoring or discipling others because of their inability to teach others. It says here, you began, you in need of a person to hold your hand. Now, that is okay when you have small children, right? But when you seem to be mature and yet you cannot do mentor or teach others, the next part is this, you ought to be teachers. The writer says, you know what? You've been having so much word, and yet you're still the same. That's simply meaning you have not been able to disciple or mentor others. That is a mark, my friend, of a spiritual immaturity. One of the desires and prayers of pastors and leaders is this. We are not made just to follow, but to be a discipler. That's what it is. The joy of us as pastors and leaders is to see someone to be a discipler of others. To be a discipler of others does not come automatically. You have to make that decision to be able to teach others. There are many ministries in any church that are crying out for volunteers simply because they need they lack people, but say, God, help us to have people that are able to teach others. The third one is this. Go ahead, please. The third one is this. When it comes to this, and because they are dull of hearing, number one, number two, they have, uh, number two is that they are, they are inability to teach. The third one is this. They are in a diet of milk. It's like a perpetual milk. What does that mean? It simply means that they don't want to be challenged. They want feel-good messages. Instead of, uh, uh, instead of going to the Word, they want devotions to kind of make them feel where they are. Do you know what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters? The diet of milk is good. I hope you have a diet of milk in a natural way. Milk is good. But scientifically, may, can I say this scientifically? We are the only creation of God where we continue to drink milk when the source of milk, the cows, the cows, when they have their babies reach a certain age, they try to kick them out. Now, this is just a, no, sir. So the cows themselves who produces, the cow that produces milk, when their babies are growing up, they said, no, no more, no more milk for you, baby. You have to go out and get some grass. And yet, as, Christ, as, as a human being, we use the source of milk from cows where they says, I don't understand, one of them, the car says, I don't understand Christian, I mean human. I already stopped my babies from drinking milk. How come they're drinking still milk? Meaning, it must be part of our diet. Diet of milk means, means you always continue to be in a challenge diet of milk. Diet of milk means you are not going to the next level of your being challenged. Look at this for a moment. Yeah. Can we click that? It says here on 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2, it says here, Dear brothers, I have been talking to you as though you were still just babies in the Christian life who are not following the Lord, but your own desire, I cannot talk to you as I would to healthy Christians who are filled with the Spirit. I have had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. And even now, you are still have to be fed on milk. What does that mean? When a person comes into the, into the arena of being mature in Christ, you and I, have to grow. For us to decide not to grow will lead us to a state of spiritual immaturity. We begin to not be sensitive. We just want something that will not challenge us. And we are forfeiting. 
what the promises of God in the deeper level of your understanding, we may never be able to. Now, as good as the messages that pastors are preaching, as good as anything, there can never be a replacement for your own individual reading of God's Word. As good as any pastors, the television or, or, or any in, in, internet, as good as they are, there's nothing that can complete. They supplement, but they will never take away from the Word of God because the Word of God involves milk and the solid food. Solid food simply means that you begin to take authority and you begin to say this and that. Now, the fourth one is this. Number one is this. What do we have? Dial of hearing. You begin to lose perspective. Number two, you begin to in a, in, enable to lead, teach others. Number three, you always want to maintain the feel-good type of messages or the diet of milk. And the fourth one is this. Your inability to discern. Your inability to discern. What does that mean? Ability to discern is, is, is to be able to know what is good from what is wrong, to know what is best from what is good, to know what is good and what is evil. When you and I have come to a point, when you have to make a decision, you have to think, is that good or bad? Then you are still someone that needs to be tagged along. When a mature person makes that distinction is this, when you begin to grow in the Lord, instinctively, you know by the power of the Holy Spirit what is good or what is bad. When you have to call the pastor, say, Pastor, is it bad to do this? Or No, those are still growing on a baby. But if you are a mature person that is supposed to know, and somebody say amen, that you're supposed to know that you're supposed to know and you still doing what you're supposed to know that is wrong, then perhaps we need to evaluate ourselves and begin to say, am I in a state of spiritual immaturity? Discerning is a gift from God when we begin to see what needs to be done, what is right and what is wrong. Why is that? Because it is very important for us to be discerning. In a church setting or in a family, discernment, spiritual discernment is very important. Look at this for a moment. Can we have the last one? It says, that you should be no longer tossed to and fro as children cared about by every wind of doctrine, by the trigger man in the cunning craftiness of deceit. What does it mean? When a Christian is not growing in the Lord, he's like a person that is just rather less. He just kind of flows in what is the whim of what's going on. But a person that is mature knows what to stand and to begin to wise up and says, this is what the Lord says. And that is spiritual maturity. In the sense is this, there are many things in the last days that people will begin to tell us what that is good and the cultural relevancy but the Word of God that is alive will stand strong and we begin to understand that when we continue to be discerning, we won't fall or we're just going to go flow through. Let us summarize the four ones, please. Can we done it? See, here are the marks of spiritual immaturity. Dullness of hearing of the Word, meaning when we, we don't really have that, that power, we don't have that sense. When you and I begin, how do we do that? How do we deal with that? Well, number one is this. Have our heart be checked by God. God, I used to, I used to be, I, no, just let him know personally. Lord, I used to be, to be in love with your word. I used to be, I used to be, have this desire to worship you. I don't have that anymore. Be honest. Perhaps the doll of hearing has, has come. Perhaps you've been hurt. Perhaps you've been, we, we don't, we have been offended. Perhaps somebody uh, and so that becomes your dull of hearing. You might be present. Just God, God says, just tell him, God, I don't, I don't want to be influenced by my feeling. I want to have that newness, the freshness. 
when I read your word, I want it to jump out. I want it to become my, I want my ear, my ears to be attentive to your word. I want it again precious because dull of hearing will rob you of what God can talk to you. Dull of hearing. The second one is this, because we don't have anything to give out, we are unable to teach others. If you don't have anything that is embedded in you, how can we teach others? How can we tell, how can we, 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 can, we can tell them to lead the way if we don't have anything? Number three is this, if we don't have the ability to teach others, we try to fall back into just chewing what we used to chew, and that is those that are easy in the word. As a matter of fact, after that, you begin to notice yourself. Your discernment will begin to lose effect. You begin, you used to stand, and you begin to say, we don't do that, or, or things that you, it's natural for you as a, as a reaction, and because you have a dull of hearing, you don't have the ability to take control anymore, you begin to be swayed to and fro, and pretty soon you will know it. You are no longer as effective as you used to be. Can this happen to a Christian? Can this happen to a Christian? Absolutely. Absolutely it can happen, provided that we begin to have a heart saying, God, I used to know you. I used to desire for you. Can you please change my heart? Make me become a person who's attentive to your ear, attentive to your voice. Take away the calluses of my heart. I don't want to be a spiritual, immature Christian. I want to be a person where you can use or I can teach others. I want to graduate from just having the diet of milk. I want solid food. And I want to be discerning in situations where I ought to be. Would you please bow your heads for a moment? Father, again, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness upon our lives. Father, all of us want to grow and mature in ways where we can be effective. We can be used. We can teach others, lead others, and tell others about the goodness of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that, that you will begin, continue to open up our hearts and mind. You have this sharpness, hunger for your word. I pray, God, that you will begin to search our hearts. We sing, God, you are good. You are good indeed. I pray, God, that you will begin to search us. Lord, as an under shepherd, I, it is my prayer that you will bless your people that they will begin to be, that they will impact their generation. And you are looking and you are waiting for men and women that can be invested with the heavenly gifting and, and promises and blessings. But God, we need to prepare ourselves in this time and age I ask you, Lord, help us to continue in the midst of trials, temptations, and difficulties that we will stand strong and that we will not regress into a state of spiritual immaturity. But instead, oh God, that we will find our place, find our spot, and stand strong for you have overcome the world. You have risen from the dead. You are the way, the truth, and the life. The world is 
coming to pass. And you have invested in each one of us the hope, the life eternal. I pray, God, that you will call back anyone that have regressed into a place of spiritual immaturity. I pray, God, Lord, that you will begin to soothe that, that pain. Lord, I pray that you will begin to heal our ears, our heart, that when we in a moment that we'll, that we'll be separated from even having a communion with you, reading your word, Lord, that, 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 that there's a pain of separation that we can't say, God, I can't live without you. I need you more than ever. I need your very presence. Lord, I pray that you treat each one of us as a baby in Christ, that you want us to grow like a like a child longing for the Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will not allow us to fall into a state of just existing, taking a space, not being alive, but just looking what's going on. I pray, God, that you will open up our eyes and mind to have a discerning spirit, to have a hunger, for your presence, for you to have a hunger for your word, to have a hunger to serve you all the days of our lives, to continue to press on until you come. Father, I pray that you will count ALC as one of those churches that you can use in these last days. And each one of us to be teachers, to be mentors, to be disciples but we cannot teach others but we cannot lead others but we cannot disciple others if we ourselves are empty of you we need your very presence God we need your very presence to fill us to overflowing in the name of Jesus is there anyone this morning I'm not going to call you to go up here, but I just want to, while everybody has our bonnet, and just raise your hand and put it down and say, Pastor, I hear you. I know someone, but more than ever, I need the unction of God. I've been pretending. I've been, I've been, I've been not living right. I want to be right before God. I want my hearing to be sharp again the same day. You please raise your hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, again, we thank you for this moment that you have ordained. I pray, God, that you will raise pastors, leaders, and they know, God, I pray those that you have called, whether it's going to be here in the island of Guam or anywhere else, as you are preparing them. And that the enemy is trying to distract them. I pray that they will stand strong. That they're hearing before you the voice of the shepherd. The voice of the God that we serve. The voice of God who is good. Lord, that they will say, I don't care what will happen or whatever they think. I will continue to press on to serve to hear the voice of the shepherd. In the name of Jesus, for those who have callous hearts, oh God, that, that has been broken, that has been violated, that has been offended. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, have mercy before everything is too late. Sharpen again, oh God. Humble us before God. Release forgiveness if need be. Don't let the enemy steal the joy that, he has, that God has given to you. Arise, be broken, be humble before God. God has so much for you. God has so much potential for you. Don't let the enemy or situation dictate 
but God has ordained. For God has ordained you to be the head, not the tail. Lord, I pray that you continue. Help us all. Give us a heart. And we'll be discerning before you. I pray, God, a spirit of hunger, a spiritual hunger for your word, for your presence. I pray, God, that you will release a, a spirit of, of an unction wherever we are, while we're driving, we're at work, at home, or sleeping, that you will begin to zero on each one of us and tell and allow us to be reminded that you love us so much, that we are special before you, that you have given the Prince of Peace, the God, to die for our sins, and we are worth it. And in turn, God, I pray, out of grace, out of gratitude, that we will say, God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. If anyone hasn't received Christ as their Lord and Savior, we'll give you an opportunity to pray this prayer, believing that Jesus Christ has done for each one of us. Would you pray, Father, I confess that I'm a sinner, guilty of separation from you, but you love me so much that you sent Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, to take my place. And by faith, I believe the death of Jesus Christ is more than enough. It is sufficient to pay back the penalty of my sins. So I believe what he has done is more than enough. I believe by grace. So I open my heart and receive Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for dying for me. In Jesus' name, and everyone will say amen. I'm going to ask you please to stand where you are. Just lift up our hands before God and as we sing that closing song. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are good. The more I seek you. Yes.
Father, we thank you. Thank you so much, oh God, that you want us to grow and mature and to have the privilege, oh God, to enjoy the benefit of grace. And at the same time, oh God, you want us to grow and mature so that we can be vessels, soldiers, workers in your vineyard to tell others about you. Lord, I pray that you want us to mature. You want us to grow. And I pray, God, when we feel like slacking down, I pray that you will remind us that you love us and you have a purpose, that we will make a decisive decision to say, it doesn't matter. I will continue to serve. As for me and my house, we will continue to serve the Lord. Lord, I pray, help us. Help us, oh God, to grow and mature. Help us to bear fruits in this season, in these last days. Help us, oh God, to stand strong and raise the banner of salvation of Jesus Christ to be discerning of the things that are happening right now. We thank you, God, in this, in this darkness, you can shine your light. And we want to be those lights. We want to reflect your glory. Help us, oh God, to mature, to continue to grow in the knowledge and in the wisdom and in the admonition of the Lord. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everyone will say, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All right, before you're seated, please uh, have, give somebody a high five, and you may be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we give the word a hand of applause again for